You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Temptations Ballad. So y'all, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, shall we? We just made it to the church and we're talking to the Knight Commander. And oh, very interested to see where this goes. Anyway, y'all, please sit back and enjoy for the next 15 to 16 minutes. And let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up. And let's go. Yeah, I'm experimenting with slightly shorter videos to see if I can get more, more out to you guys in a timely fashion. All right. I bid you all welcome to the Grand Cathedral. The large polar bear bowed politely with a jolly smile. Artemy grinned before swiftly shooting a glare at Cole and Sid. Mostly Cole, that clearly says, be nice. Sid shuffled nervously and waved. H hello Cole, meanwhile, gave the large handsome bear an appraising look before letting out a low whistle. Whoa, Artie, you didn't tell me your commander was such a fine, grizzled bear. Let me know if you're pent up from all that night business. I might have a holy, holy solution for you, if you know what I mean. Grant's bushy eyebrows shot up so quickly that they almost escaped the head. Oof! What the hell was that for? Apologies. I did not understand a word of what you said, but I was suddenly overwhelmed with the urge to clobber you. Beside them, Grant broke into a deep, jovial laugh. My, my, Artemy, your new friend is quite the flatterer. Be wary, Commander. He is a menace to society. Hey, I was just being friendly. Your friendship often comes at a price. Artemy shook her head shamefully and bowed towards Grank. Please forgive his insolence, Knight Commander. Grank waved it off with a good-natured smile. There's nothing to forgive. Who am I to turn down such charming compliments? Cole grinned up at Grank, impressed. Ha! Huh, good to know not all holy knights are uptight killjoys. A pleasure to meet you. Likewise, though I must say. Uh-oh. Grank kneeled down and leaned towards Cole with a sly grin. He was a large and imposing man, and suddenly very close. Intimately close. Cole could feel the heat radiating off the bear as the sensation of Grank's warm muzzle brushed up against his ear. Commander suddenly whispered to him in a deep, husky voice, It's for real estate. Oh. I'm afraid you can't handle what this bear has to offer, little man. Once I'm through with you, you'll never walk straight again. Cole's face flushed and a hot shiver shot up his spine. As quickly as he came, Grant quickly stood back up and laughed jovially as though nothing had happened. Words completely failed him as Cole's jaws hung open in bewilderment. Boss, are you alright? What did he whisper to you? Cole continued to stare dumbfounded, gaping like a goldfish. Artemy grabbed his shoulder and shook him suspiciously. Cole, what happened? Knight Commander, what sort of intimidation tactics did you use? I didn't know such thing, dear pupil. If you are so curious, you could ask him yourself. Cole suddenly snapped out of his trance and pointed an accusing finger at Grank. You! This was a trap! Even if I told them the truth, they'd never fucking believe me! Knight Commander Grank smiled innocently. I don't know what you're talking about, young man. Though in the future, I advise you to avoid dishing things you can't take. Cole, what are you two talking about? It's very rude to keep secrets during a conversation. That is something you can ask your friend at a later time. Anyways, I assume you're all here to speak about yesterday's events. Don't change the subject! Is there anything I can do to aid in your mission with my dear Artemy? Do not hesitate to ask. I am happy to support you in any way I can. Yes, there are a few things we'd like to clear up, if that's okay with you, sir. Ask me anything you'd like. Once your friend's wits have returned to him, of course. Cole finally closed his gaping maw and cleared his throat loudly. He absolutely will not allow this old bear to fluster him like this. Focus! Right. Uh, we got some questions for you. Introductions. Oh, right, where are my manners? I'm Cole Bonebreaker, and this is my lackey and muscle, Sid. And obviously, you already know Artemy. Chosen one, goody two-shoes, hyperventilating mess. Hey! It's a pleasure to meet you. Grank's eyebrow perked up with interest. Bonebreaker? Ah, there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. I've had many encounters with your father in the past, young Cole. You have? During his reign of terror where Marrow Bonebreaker and his band of merry gay men pillaged the nobility of their riches, I was, tasked, I was tasked with stopping him. Alas, I never succeeded in capturing him. I'm glad for my failure, however. Your father is a good man with admirable intentions and questionable methods. Cole puffed out his chest with pride. Of course you couldn't even touch Papa. His strength as a mercenary is even greater than the legends. Grank sighed, eyes filling with nostalgia. 
I admit, the real challenge was fending off his partner, Hamish. That man is a fiend. Dashing in and out of the shadows like a ghost, raining arrows and entangling my soldiers in the most complex trap wires. The battle was already lost before we could even, read it, even reach your father. Those two make a deadly duo. Cole grumbled. Now you're just giving him too much credit. Papa did most of the heavy lifting on the front lines. Grant chuckled quietly. With such legends raising you, I suppose we can expect great things from you in the future, Cole Bonebreaker. Yeah, I suppose you can. Grant turned towards Sid with a kind smile. And you, young man, where did you hail from? Oh, um, I'm not from some legendary mercenary family or some chosen hero. I'm just some commoner Artemy ran into yesterday, and I'm happy to help out. A proud laugh escaped Grank as he thumped Sid on the back. Humble beginnings! I too began from a humble start. Far more than you, I dare say. Hold your head up high, boy. There's no shame in your origin. Only pride. I have no doubt that you have much to offer. Really? You think so? If I can make it this far, so can you, son. Colfell saw him and peered at the old bearer curiously. The highest ranking knight commander came from a humble start. It wasn't an impossible idea. The church was quite fond of such good feel good success stories. But reality, on the other hand? Cole's eyes narrowed. Something wasn't adding up. About delivery mission. We have some question about the delivery mission you gave Artemy yesterday. Why did you suddenly hand it off to her? She's, she's literally the most unreliable delivery person you could have possibly chosen. Artemy grumbled and elbowed his side sharply. Rude. Hey, I was just telling it like it is. While honesty is a virtue, I believe it should be applied constructively. Cole rubbed his sore ribs with a pout. What happened to you? You were so meek and polite yesterday. Oh, excuse me. Upon meeting you, I have since discovered that patience is a limited resource. Cole turned towards Grank with exasperation. You gave the very important crown to this? Grank chuckled. I simply wanted to give dear Artemy an excuse to go out and stretch her legs. A young lady shouldn't be cooped up in a dusty cathedral for her whole life. He sighed ruefully. It was supposed to be a simple task. I never imagined things would get so serious. Cole scratched his chin and stared at Grank suspiciously. Is that the entire reason? The old bear's file's smile faltered before returning with a mischievous chuckle. I admit that I partially did it out of spite. Yesterday morning I ran into our dear bishop giving Artemy another one of our harsh lectures. It never sat well with me. Then it dawned on me. I could kill two birds with one stone. Artemy could take on this simple delivery job, and I could deeply annoy the bishop in one fell swoop. Night Commander, you should really act more amiable around Her Excellency. Grank waved his hand dismissively. She knows I don't like her. There's no point pretending otherwise. Artemy sighed and stared down at her feet. Just once, I wish everyone here could get along. Should your mother decide to treat you with dignity, I shall extend the same kindness to her. Alas, that day is yet to come. Cole glanced at Artemy with, with concern. He had noticed since yesterday, she had a habit of gnawing at the thumb of her glove when she was especially anxious. She felt like best that they changed the subject. So you decided to give the delivery order to Artemy last minute on a whim? Nobody else knew about it? Grant scratched his chin thoughtfully. Well, I received notice of this mission the day before from the Prince. His Highness mentioned offhand that he had always wanted to meet the Creator's Chosen, so that might have played a part in my decision. Besides that, nothing else comes to mind. I see. Sorry, could you excuse me for a moment? Cole pardoned himself from everyone and pretended to adjust his pants loin his pants loincloth in a corner. As soon as he was at a discreet distance, he nudged his pockets urgently. Hey, Noodle, you there? The ball python poked his head out and immediately grimaced. <sighs> this place smells so disgusting! The stench of celestial magic is everywhere! How can you stand it? Ugh, I think I'm going to vomit. Stay with me, you little shit. Demons are pretty sensitive to magic, yeah? Can you sense if that knight commander has been manipulated in any way? Malice hissed indignantly. Why in the world would I ever help a puny mortal like you? I'll get us another helping of Mrs. Shrikewitz cheesy bread if you help out. Deal! Cole blinked. The demon agreed much faster than he expected. Malice flicked out his tongue at Grank in the distance. She was chatting merrily with Artemy and Sid. He flinched and gagged loudly. Ugh, utterly vile. He stinks of celestial magic almost as much as your shiny friend with the anxiety. Come on, give me something useful. Snake shook his head and focused again. His eyes suddenly flashed a deep red. Ooh. The mind link between the two of them held strong. Cole felt his own eyes water and ache with the strain of arcane magic. 
What the hell are you doing? Ghostly gaze. The snake peered towards Grank across the room with glowing red eyes. Cole gulped and shifted his position in an attempt to hide the dim scarlet light. Hmm. Oh my. What is it? What do you see? Look at the size of that thing. This man is packing. Dude, focus. I don't want to hear that coming from you of all people. Malice observed further. There are only slight traces, but there seems to be leftover fragments of some sort of spell. Not very strong. Suggestion, perhaps? Suggestion? It is like a weaker version of your charm person spell. However, it is much more discreet. It is strange, though. Paladins are supposed to be resistant to mind control. Cole scratched his chin thoughtfully. Hmm. There's a high chance that the prince cast the suggestion spell on Grank to get him to pass the delivery onto Artemy. But why, though? Did he want his crown to get stolen? Cole peered at his demon companion. What are you demon folk planning? Malice rolled his neck in a snake equivalent of a shrug. I'll be honest with you, puny mortal. I have no idea. I just agreed to all this because I wanted to travel to the material plane. All my siblings have come here before. It's high time I get the opportunity as well. The general gist of the deal with our summoner was just to make contact with mortals and collect their negative emotions. These negative emotions are often used as fuel for our infernal strength. And the crown ended up in an illegal trade ring, where the rubies were scattered among various shady people who are rife with negative emotions. Things are slowly starting to make sense. About the crowd. Ugh, I've got a yeah, I've got a question. Why does the prince want a crown that looks straight out of an evil fairy tale? That can't be good for his reputation. Grank shrugged. I didn't design the darn thing. The crown was ordered by King Roderick to be created by one of his loyal arcane researchers back when our dear king was still alive. I hear that the crown has some special magical properties, but I am unsure of the specifics. Couldn't the king ask for a more friendly design? Dark, pointy, and mysterious doesn't exactly do him any favors. Someone could have at least told him it was a bad idea. Grant gave Cole a pointed look. Ah, yes. Your Majesty, do you accept constructive criticism? Your taste in fashion is shit. Okay, point taken. Prince Cassius? What can you tell me about the Prince? I don't think I've actually ever seen the guy before. Grant chuckled, but his smile did not reach his eyes. The Prince's t is a timid, shy young man who is around your age, I believe. I served as his personal protector from time to time. A rather unfortunate necessity, considering his unorthodox origins. What do you mean? King Roderick and Queen Tabitha were an infamously barren couple. Throughout her, their reign, they failed again and again to conceive a child of their own. Many grew worried about how the line of succession would be handled when the time comes. And a few years ago, suddenly and out of the blue sky, suddenly and out of the blue, His Majesty introduced Prince Cassius to the world as their only son. Many people questioned his legitimacy, but the family resemblance is undeniable. King Roderick was quick to silence anyone who questioned the prince's status. I think I remember this announcement. There's a lot of gossip and rumors surrounding the whole thing. That prince that just showed up out of nowhere, hmm? Cole scratched his chin thoughtfully. If I may ask, how did the king and queen die? I don't think I've heard any public details about it. Well, as you know, the Queen Tabitha has always been very sickly throughout her life. The king toiled day and night to find a cure for her condition and set countless researchers and healers on the task. The only reason she had survived as long was due to King Roderick's arcane prowess supporting her. Alas, it was not enough. The Queen passed away from her sickness around a week ago. King Roderick was beside himself with grief. None of the servants could coax his majesty to eat or rest. He died shortly from exhaustion and grief a few days later. But that's horrible! They're not even that old! May they rest peacefully in the Creator's embrace. How did the Prince take all this? Oh, the poor boy was a nervous wreck. He'd always been an anxious man before, but the passing of both his parents did a number on his nerves. One could scarcely walk in his general direction without him jumping in fright. Hmm. As their conversation dragged on, Grant caught sight of Cole's suspicious glances. An oddly satisfied smile spread across his face. The polar bear turned toward Artemy. Artemy, why don't you show your new friend around the cathedral? I'd like a word in private with your adventuring party leader, if, I, if you don't mind. Huh? Uh, oh, that's an excellent idea. Uh, come, Sir Sid. The cathedral is the most stunning courtyard. Uh, hey, wait up! Artemy eagerly dragged a surprised Sid outside without a second thought. Grank waited patiently for the two to move out of earshot before turning towards Cole. What's this all about? You've been staring at me with such perceptive eyes, young man. I figured there was something you wanted to discuss. 
Cole peered at the Knight Commander strangely. Yeah, something's been bothering me. Your name is Grank. Grank Stormborn. That sounds awfully... The smile on the bear's face grew with an amused glint. Go on. Cole swallowed down his nervousness. It doesn't sound like a name a highborn Knight Commander would have. Usually nobles would name their kids something a little more elegant. No offense, sir. None taken. And Stormborn? That's more of a given title than an actual sure name. Surname. Grink let out a jovial bark. Amusing, coming from a guy named Bonebreaker. The entire guild's like 99% sure that Papa renamed himself that at some point. If you got a problem with our name, you can direct our complaints to Papa. Cole cleared his throat loudly. Anyway, this all points to you start starting off as a lowborn, but somehow worked yourself up to the position of Knight Commander and even somehow earned yourself a title? Forgive me for my rudeness, but that doesn't sound very in character for this church. So what's your whole deal? You're no ordinary Knight Commander. Grank laughed. My, what a sharp mind you have. Artemy has chosen her friends well. You're correct in all your observations. Well, I guess we're going to get to the bottom of that the next time. Anyway, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. I have a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.